I'm gonna show you a really simple way to make an infused oil. So infused oils you can put on cocktails. Um, I'm gonna, I use them a lot now for food dishes, so we probably will, this will be kind of an introduction to what I'm gonna use it for, but the most important thing is just to show you how simple and easy this is. So what you do to infuse an oil, first of all, you have to start with a neutral oil. When I say a neutral oil, an oil that doesn't really have a lot of flavor, like a walnut oil or an avocado oil or an olive oil, right? So we use the best, one of the best oils to use is a grapeseed oil. It's basically made from exactly what it sounds like, the seeds from a grape. So obviously there's a lot of leftover seeds um, from wineries that don't use seeds in their wine. And um, so they make a grapeseed oil. It's a, neutral, it's a neutral oil and we're gonna use this and we're gonna show you the easiest way to do it is to put it into a Vitamix and just let it go and heat it up. So, what I like to do is I like to do uh, basically, you know how you'll go to the store and you'll usually get a bunch of either parsley or dill? It usually looks like this. This is the perfect amount, you don't have to measure it, to use one whole bunch of your herb. I love, by the, by the way, dill oil is one of my favorites. We're gonna do parsley today, but you can use dill, parsley, any kind of herb that you wanna infuse. But my point is, is this bunch that it comes in, cilantro oil could be great. For every bunch, you're gonna do two cups of grapeseed oil. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put two cups of the grapeseed oil into the Vitamix. Now listen, I've gone through this technique many, many times and a lot of different chefs and restaurants have many different ways of doing this. Um, and you know, some people heat the oil up and then reheat it and then sit it overnight. This is actually adapted, um, a couple of sous chefs that I met one time got this from this very famous restaurant called Meadowwood and this is how they do it. And I did it for the first time a couple months ago and it's dynamite, it's really easy. So what I'll do is, you will have stems on these things, so I definitely cut the stems off because that's just not enough flavor and I'll put the whole bunch of parsley in there. So two cups of the grapeseed oil to this and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on high, okay? And I'm gonna let it go. And what I'm gonna do, you'll hopefully you'll be able to see it on the camera. I'll start lifting this up and once it starts to smoke, it's, it's not real smoke, but it's just, it's intense heat that's generated from, from putting this on high. We turn it off and then we filter it right away. Okay, so let's, let's get this going. So as you can, I waited for it to start to smoke, see? So it's starting to smoke, I hope you can catch that. We know it's done. And now we're gonna take this, and listen, you can use, coffee strainers are gonna take a really, really long time. There's also super bags that you can get that are great. But one of the easiest ways is just to take a um, paper towel, put it over a coffee filter and drip it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create an oil and the oil is going to taste like parsley. And we're just going to look at the color of that. Look how incredible and intense the color is. That's what's so beautiful also about the grapeseed oil is it's picking up the flavor, but it's going to pick up this beautiful, intense color. So again, we're just going to let that sit. I got most of this. I think I hear it dripping and we'll come back to that. And then we're going to show you what we can do, just what I, what I like to do with it. But then of course you can do it with anything you want. Okay, I am excited to check on our parsley oil. So, oh yes, check that out. Okay, so you can see how beautiful and rich that oil is, okay? Deep, deep, dark green. So all of that flavor, all the parsley is right into that oil, okay? So what we're gonna do now is, listen, this is, this is an easy way of making oils, but it's also, Listen, if you're making cocktails, especially cocktails that you put up maybe in a martini or a coupe glass, it's cool to put like different flavored oils on top. I think that's really amazing. Um, but I wanna show you just a very simple dish that I do to eat uh, and a little drink that goes with it that really uh, I think makes this oil shine. So I have these incredible watermelons. I love watermelons. Watermelons are come from, uh, originated in South Africa probably about 5,000 years ago, they think. And the thing about a watermelon, other than some of these other melons, like honeydews and cantaloupes, 
you typically get those from either a market or a farmer and they usually you let them ripe. When a watermelon is picked off of its vine, it's actually on a vine that's on the ground, um, it's actually ready to go. So it's not one of those things that you kind of keep out to ripen. When a watermelon is picked, it's ripe. So I, I love putting it in the refrigerator. I love cutting it in half right away just to kind of see what I'm dealing with. So I do have a little bit of a bruise here, it looks like, but what's nice is I'm going to be using the center of the watermelon. So what we're going to do, <clears throat> we're going to cut this in a slice just about an inch thick. Okay. And then I have, you can use cookie cutters. People use this for different baking purposes. It's easy to find. And I'll just cut it out here. And then if you can find a really cool plate, now this is obviously a saucer for coffees or teas, and it's so beautiful, I wanna use it. And I thought, oh, you know what? Yeah, it has the indentation for the, for the little cup, but if I put the watermelon over it, it kind of hides it. So I put this watermelon on the side, but obviously you can use any cup. I really, you want to definitely have a little bit of space. Now, the watermelon is best cold, so what I'll do sometimes is I will actually <clears throat> take a pan, especially if I'm going to have guests over, sometimes four or five people. It's not something you want to do in front of them and have them wait. So what I'll do is I'll pre-cut like four or five of them so they're all ready, and I'll just put these in the refrigerator. And now we're going to take this beautiful parsley oil, I usually spread a couple of those on, but I love, and what's great is seeing the green against the white. If you can have like a white plate, it's perfect. And then I like to put a little bit of a garnish. You could use dill. Uh, I happen to have this beautiful bronze fennel. You could use regular fennel as well. That's the, the um, has a little bit of a licorice flavor to it, fennel. This is what it looks like. So it has the bulb that you cook and that you eat on the bottom. This is actually what the leaves look like. This is called bronze fennel, and I like it because it's a little bit more mild, a little bit more sweet. It's not as licorice tasting, and I love to encourage people to, to eat this after they've had this dish. So what I do is I put that on top so it looks beautiful. And then the trick to this, <clears throat> serve it with a little spoon, but what goes great with watermelon? cheap okay so what I did is I prepared a manchego vermouth so I have a video on the channel how to make this manchego vermouth what I basically did what essentially what this is, is I took a vermouth I used the Dolan Blanc which everyone knows is my favorite and I put manchego cheese in there with the rinds I just let it sit and now I have a cheese vermouth definitely needs to be chilled afterwards needs to be refrigerated because it is a wine based thing but what I'll do is I'll pour a little bit of that vermouth in there. And then the whole idea is to take a sip of the vermouth after you have a bite of the watermelon. So let's take a little bite of this watermelon here. I also like having watermelon sometimes with the seeds. I know people don't like the seeds, but the contrast of the black against it is really beautiful. So make sure you get a nice little oil in there. They, mm. I taste the parsley. That, it's unbelievable that that oil has the flavor of parsley. And it, it's just one of those things that people get blown away. Dill is so great with this as well. I use parsley because it's a very easy herb to get. But the flavor, you've got the crisp watermelon and that oil is perfect. Let me take one more bite. This is so refreshing. It's a wonderful thing to serve at the end of a meal. Mmm. Mmm. I have a little sip of manchego vermouth with it. Mm. Amazing combination. You have to go out and do this right away. It's so simple and so easy to make, you're gonna blow people away. So, cheers, good luck. Yeah, it's a winner. Mmm, mmm, mmm.